During that age of space exploration, any jobs that went overseas were the kind nobody really wanted anyway. Those that stayed in this country were the consequence of persistent streams of innovation that could not be outsourced because other nations couldn't yet figure out how to do what it was we were doing. In fact, most of the world's nations stood awestruck by our accomplishments. Let's be honest, of course, over that period, we went to the moon because we were at war. It's not a secret. To think otherwise, though, in fact, is delusional. And it leads some people to suppose we got to the moon by 1969. Of course, we're going to be in Mars by 1980. No, not if you went to the moon because you were at war. You then establish that the Soviet Union is not also going to the moon. Everything ends. But that was with a cost. What is that cost? Well, yes, war can get you to go to the moon, get, even get you to go to Mars. But there's another driver that exists, another driver of great ambitions, and it's almost as potent as the need to protect your security. And that's the promise of wealth. Nobody wants to die, of course, but nobody wants to die poor. Fully funded missions to Mars and anywhere beyond low Earth orbit, commanded by astronauts who today would be in middle school, would reboot America's capacity to innovate as no other force in society can. What matters here, in fact, are not spinoffs, although there are plenty of spinoffs that are fun to read about. NASA, every couple of years, puts out a document. NASA spinoffs, I recommend everyone here review that document if you haven't seen them. But beyond the spinoffs, what matters are the cultural shifts in how the electorate views the role of science and technology in our daily lives. Because as the 70s drew to a close, we stopped advancing a space frontier. The Tomorrow articles faded. We spent the next several decades coasting on the innovations conceived by earlier dreamers. They knew that seemingly impossible things were possible. And others among them, those who saw what the previous generation had enabled, witnessed the Apollo voyages to the moon, even though they were not a participant. And this is the greatest adventure there ever was. Yet, if all you do is coast, eventually you slow down while others catch up and pass you by. We've got symptoms in society today. We're going broke. We're mired in debt. We don't have as many scientists as we want or need. And jobs are going overseas. I assert that these are not isolated problems. That they're the collective consequence of the absence of ambition that consumes you when you stop having dreams. In the NASA portfolio, it's multidimensional. It taps the frontiers of biology, which we look for life on Mars, chemistry, physics, astrophysics, geology, atmospherics, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering. These are the classic subjects that are the foundation of the STEM fields. Science, of course, science, technology, engineering, and math, and they're all represented in the NASA portfolio. Epic space adventures, adventures plant seeds of economic growth because doing what's never been done before is intellectually seductive, whether or not we deem it practical. And when you conduct those exercises, innovation follows just as day follows night. And when you innovate, you lead the world, you keep your jobs, and concerns over tariffs and trade regulations evaporate. The call for this adventure would echo loudly across society and down the educational pipeline. At what cost? The spending portfolio of the United States currently allocates 50 times as much money to social programs and education than it does NASA. So the old argument, why are we spending money up there and not down here? We are spending money down here. To the credit of the lawmakers, understanding where priorities need to land. Consider, however, that the half a penny budget that NASA receives, if you double it, twice that, as unthinkable that is to so many, I assert that we can transform the country from a sullen, dispirited nation, weary of economic struggle, to one where it is replaying its